if you must know, I'm wearing this head wrap around my head because I took the front of my braids down so that I can do the black girl trick and only get the front of my hair redone. Y'all so nosy? Hey guys, it's Wahima, but just call me Wah. Melanated! On my lips today is Vampira by Kat Von D. It's the Everlasting Liquid Lipsticks, and I absolutely love it. I re-upped on this. Oh, and shout out to Xena64. Thank you so much for the birthday gift. I did re-up this <laughs> with your gift to me. So I want to thank you so much for my birthday gift. Okay, so let's jump right into this. So I'm going to first talk about Paul and Karini because as we all know, I sure did forget about them. I mean, I really don't have anything to report. When Sean got to them, Paul was actually in Brazil. It turns out that they have decided to apply for their K-1 visa and they're going to try to have dual citizenship in each country so, so that one doesn't have to give up one's life in either country in order to be with each other. So I thought that was really cute. There was some weird energy between them. I'm not sure what was going on. They showed the video of Karini getting mugged and Paul got upset and had to get up and walk away because I think he was gonna cry. And Karini was not sympathetic at all. She just like literally was like, and watched him walk away. She didn't even go, Oh, looks like they're gonna be happily ever after. They also took some photos on the internet of him in like an orange jumpsuit. Like he's in jail with handcuffs on and her as the sexy police officer. And I thought that was kind of cute. So all in all, um, that's really it. And I hope the best for Paul and Karini. So in this video, I'm going to talk about 90 Day Fiance. I think it's episode four. And then in the next video, I'm gonna talk about the 90 Day Fiance that just came on yesterday, which is yesterday, Sunday the 5th. All right, so let's jump right into it. I didn't take any notes, so this is gonna be short. So first we start with Annie and David. Annie and David are in Annie's village. There is a wonderful reception for them when they pull up. David is so overcome with emotion because he is so happy and honored. I think he feels loved and appreciated when he gets into her village because the entire town is out dancing and singing and clapping for them. It's actually really pretty. It's like the whole town, the whole village is excited for her, excited that she's gonna marry this foreigner, excited for this new thing and this fun thing that's happening to them in their little village. And Annie's overcome with emotion too. She's crying and they get inside the house. He meets mommy and daddy. Mommy immediately is like, you know, the matriarch of the family girl because daddy just sits there and doesn't say no. Annie's mom is talking to David and basically Annie explains to the mother that David doesn't have a lot of money. He can't pay the full dowry, which we, as we know is 500,000 baht. He can't pay the full dowry, but he is a hard worker and when they get back to the States, they will be sending money. Mother accepts that and she says that it's okay that she will accept just the 50,000 baht, which is all that David has to offer right now, but she also wants a water buffalo. So we learned that the water buffalo is pretty important in their village because it helps with the farming and it's an easy animal to take care of. The water buffalo that they go to look at, David can't afford it. You know, David is just stressed out. I mean, watching him be stressed out about money is stressing me out. Oh, my lights. <gasps> Sorry. I had some of you guys mention that you felt like Annie's family was taking advantage of David because he is a foreigner. And I think you are correct. And I don't know that I'm mad at it. And I feel like maybe I'm just too biased because Annie has an opportunity to help her family by making David pay. Just by default, because he is a foreigner, he is expected to have money. And it just so happens that he has none. And it's not that David just isn't a rich man. David doesn't have money. And there's no way that they can explain that to the family. Because the, obviously the family would be like, why would we leave her with you when there are plenty other foreigners who could come and take her and give her a better lifestyle? So they go to buy the water buffalo, goes on ahead and he spends the money that he has saved to get him and Annie back to the United States on these water buffaloes. It better be true love. Let's move on to David and Evelyn. David and Evelyn is his first 24 hours in the US. They are driving around Claremont, New Hampshire. Evelyn is showing him around. He's saying, you know, this seems like a nice, quaint, quiet town and it's, it's interesting. And he immediately talks about the fact that he eventually would like to move away from New Hampshire. Evelyn is not okay with this. Her face drops. Like she never in a million years thought that he would want to leave. First of all, they probably never talked about it. Why would he want to go from a hustling, bustling city in Spain and live in New Hampshire? Like why would, why would he want to do that? Unless he specifically said, I want to live in a small town. It doesn't make any sense that they would stay there, but but Evelyn's 18 years old, you guys. She's very naive. She doesn't know. She, she probably never even came into her realm of consciousness and they probably never even talked about it. So I really can't even be mad at her. Think about it in this perspective. Olivia 
and Evelyn are only two years apart. They go to her favorite breakfast nook and they're having breakfast and the conversation of the tuxedos for the wedding comes up. Evelyn is really adamant that she wants every member of David's groom party to be wearing a tuxedo. David is trying to get her to bend on that because he feels like it's an additional expense that's unnecessary for their wedding. And Evelyn doesn't want to give in on it. She feels like his friends had enough time to save up their money and they should be able to rent a tux and that it's an American tradition and that's how it should be. Then David brings up the fact that weddings in Spain are less formal. The thing is though, he does understand that tuxedos are a normal thing at weddings. And they should have talked about the fact that he would like the wedding to be a little casual. You can have your Western white wedding any way you wanna have it. So for them to make it like it's a difference of culture is a little weird to me because I'm sure there are people in Spain who get married with formal dresses and tuxedos. There are some people who don't, the same way there are people who do that here. It just depends on the bride and groom and what the expectations are. And I think that David wasn't prepared for Evelyn's expectation and or Evelyn's unwillingness to budge on certain things. And I think that comes with her youth. She is so caught up in the fairy tale of what her wedding was, is gonna be that she is unable to budge and think about the money side of it for people who are traveling from different parts of Europe to come to New Hampshire. David is trying to, in a very machismo manner, get her to understand what's going on. And she's defending herself a little bit more than I think somebody her age might, which I'm happy about. But at the same time, I think she's being a little selfish, which some would argue she's allowed to be. I personally would argue, yes, you are allowed to be when you aren't throwing a wedding and you have to think about your groom's side of the family. So next we're gonna move on to Molly and Luis. So this is when Molly picks up Luis from the airport. Luis gets to the United States. Molly is so excited. Olivia and Kinsley go with Molly to the airport to pick Luis up. Jess, the uncle, stays at home. On the car ride, Kingsley is just so excited. She is just talking up a storm to Luis. In fact, I don't even know if Luis is really following all the things she's saying but they're just kind of having conversation. Luis is a little surprised that they live an hour away from the airport. Olivia's driving and Molly tries to correct Olivia's driving and Olivia gets a little bit like defensive. Olivia's just upset and I, uh, you guys know that I understand exactly where Olivia's coming from. Also, she's 17 years old. The only thing she's gonna have is an attitude. That's the only thing she can do. She doesn't have any other tools in her arsenal. <laughs> like that's all she can do is give an attitude. And she isn't being like crazy rude to Luis. She's just being cold and like, you know, that's, that it is what it is. Um, and they get to the house. Jess is so warm and welcoming to Luis. Olivia directly goes downstairs. She's not having any of it. She goes downstairs to the basement to her bedroom and she's out. So the next morning they get up, Molly makes them breakfast and she's nervous. And it seems like she burns the bacon. She burns the toast. The magic of the magical magic. And I don't know if Molly did her hair, but girl, Kingsley's hair is done in cornrows up in a ponytail. And I'm like, yes. Molly, take that baby girl to get her hair done. Or if she did it herself, yes, Molly, embrace that culture. Cause you know, sometimes you see people, you see little, little black girls with mothers that aren't black and their hair just, sometimes it just does, they did, they, they, baby girl's hair was done the next day and I was into barrettes and all girl. And Luis is feeling some kind of way because Olivia is being rude and doesn't want to come up and have breakfast with them. And I think he's feeling a little bit like a fish out of water, but I hope things get better for them in the long run. So the next couple that we're going to talk about is Azan. Azan, 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 Azan and Nicole. Um, I don't know exactly what really happened to them in this episode. I'm going to be 100% real. I don't know. You guys remind me what happened with Nicole and Azan in this episode. I feel like there was nothing really that interesting that happened to them. Nothing at least that moved the plot forward, walking around marketplaces. All right, what is the other couple? So Elizabeth and Andre. So for this episode, Elizabeth goes to see a lawyer and the lawyer and her talk about some of the potential risks or problems that could arise with this K-1 visa. Elizabeth is very worried that he's not even gonna get the interview. So she goes to the lawyer, the lawyer sort of advises her and says, you know, if Andre has any arrests on his record. If he lied even a little bit on his application, it'll be considered visa fraud and then he'll never get his visa. So she's very, very worried. She's done all her research and she's trying to figure out ways to ensure that Andre gets his K-1 visa because she super misses him and she really wants him in the United States. 
Okay, so that's it for that episode of 90 Day Fiance, you guys. It was an okay episode. It didn't really move the plot forward. It was only an hour long. Now, next episode is two hours long and I'm gonna give you that one next. So go on ahead and take a break, get yourself a drink, get some popcorn, and we're gonna come back with the next episode of 90 Day Fiance season five. All right, you guys, if you like what I do here on this channel and you would like to consider becoming a Patreon patron, please click the link down below. Otherwise, remember to be you, be true, and find your place. Bye.